Good morning, everybody. Dave in Kentucky here. and It is uh, early on a Sunday morning, February 25th. That's for you, Henry. So is this. I got some coffee. We're going to get a shave going. Today, we're using some Arr Bay Rum. Crown and Crane Bay Rum today. Uh, you notice the rum is spelled R-H-U-M. So what's up with that, right? Well, I did a little Googling, and so there's a French rum, which is actually made from fresh sugar cane juice. Or, uh, yeah, sugar cane juice instead of molasses, which would be the R-U-M rum. So uh, did Crown and Crane go to that extent to use French rum to get their scent? I don't know. I'm sure there's a slight difference between the two um, in the final product if you're drinking it. I don't think the pirates cared what kind of rum it was as long as they got their rum, right? And besides, I'm a bourbon guy. So, but that's what we're using for the soap. We're using Rooster's Nest Bourbon Bay Rum as our splash. We're going to be lathering up. Thank you, Patrick with my custom, uh, one of the custom brushes he had sent me. This one is oak, the other one is birch, if I can just get that in my head. And I've got a silk smoke knot, synthetic. And the shave today, I'm sure you saw on the thumbnail, we're gonna be using a Shake Sharp uh, razor. And this is a nickel plated model, very good condition. Got the instructions in there as well. <clears throat> And as we're shaving, we'll discuss the differences in the different models. So if you're not familiar with it, this one, you slide it over and it flips back and it is connected. The top cap is connected. So that is a difference on some. Um, I will show you too. I already had a blade in here. We're going to continue to use these two blades, you'll notice. So I was always told when I got into these by Jeff Mudrick, Jay Mudrick on a lot of the forums, that if you double stack a blade, you get a much better shave. It um, probably, and I've used the other and I've gone back to using two and um, I don't remember, I'm sure it's just because I preferred it. You get a thicker stack of blades. It's a little more rigid, uh, probably more I'm sorry, I should have shown how that was done. Anyway, um, more similar to the thicker blades that were used back in the day. So basically, you can set the, the razor on there. It's got two. <laughs> it has these two bars here that you can see. And the razor will rest on those. Or the blade will rest in those. There's a little nub on the back here, it goes down in the hole there, slide it over, and you're locked in. Uh, it was designed to shake back and forth. This bottom plate would come out with a hone stone on it and sharpen it. You don't do that with modern blades because they have coatings on them. You don't want to remove the coating, which gives the longevity to the razor blade. So. Uh, but that's the deal with that. If you look in Waits Compendium, you notice that the shows in the original, and we'll get into the different models. The original model, it showed it with a single edge blade and a double edge blade. Uh, modern single edge blades don't work in this. So the whole uh, slot in the middle of the um, single edge blade for modern ones is not wide enough for that nub to go through. But anyway, so let's go ahead and Get to making some lather here. I'm gonna slurp a coffee as we get going. Sorry, I'm moving a little slower. I'm trying to cover the information for you about the razor. Let me get my face wet. And this shave brought to you by Ivermectin, a viewer that had requested that we use our razor from last week the aristocrat from the executive set and he also said it would be nice to see a shake sharp shave 
it had been a while since I've used them. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure if you go back in my library, you'll see a comparison as I talk about the different models. You'll see a comparison of uh, the three models I had. I'm missing just one of the models. I'm missing the MK 1.5. And I'll explain the differences in those as we get going here. Uh, Crown and Crane Soap. This is a... Huh, got a bore here and there from the last shave with it. This is my second shave with this. It just came in the other day. Um, Crown and Crane. This is their tallow base soap. It is a really nice base. Uh... Kind of a cheap, you know, plastic uh, uh, jar that it's in. Um, I don't really care for the little lip that it has. It goes back. You have to reach in there, scoop to get lather out. But as it gets lower in the tub, I'm sure it won't matter. Nice graphics on them, though. And the good soap. I'm trying to remember when this came in. Was it yesterday I used it or the day before? And I used a bore brush with it, so wanted to try it with synthetic. I'm sorry, Joelle, if you're still watching, that I didn't use the bore on on the video instead. Wasn't planned, just the way it worked out. So I used to have the original model, the MK1, which was actually a Bakelite handle and then a uh, the brass cap with a gold finish. And that one, the cap would come off completely. You would slide it over and would come off. Uh, then the MK 1.5 was still Bakelite, but it was attached as this one is, and the cap would just flip back and stay connected. Then the MK 2s, which this is, came in gold and nickel finishes. So that gives you a quick breakdown. of the models and like I said if you go back to my library I think you'll see a video where I show two MK2's the nickel one I have here and a gold one as well as the MK1 that I had Why do you use two blades? Well, as I mentioned, that's how it was described to me. I've tried it both ways, and for some reason I've stuck with this. I think I prefer it. Do you know there's two blades? You don't feel it. As far as the sharpness cutting through the hair. Um, but I'm sure it's thicker and holds things more securely. <clears throat> as it's a more rigid setup, similar to what the blades of its day would have been. Uh, I can tell you my experience is the Shake Sharp is um, one of the best vintage razors that you'll find <clears throat> as far as for effectiveness, uh, efficiency, and smoothness. Get a little more moisture on our face there and lather up for pass two. some that have used it and swear by it for head shaves for comfort and again how effective it can be 
not being a head shaver, I can't speak to that. But I know others have raved about that, its ability in that area. So smooth you'll have a tendency to keep going over an area and could perhaps over shave. Uh, there was an MK, I don't know if it was a 1 or 1.5, it was on eBay recently. I was watching it, had a low starting bid of like 20, 25 bucks. I think it went for 30 something. I actually thought about getting it. I was deciding to perhaps sell off some of my collection. I, I let go of my other two models that I had and just kept the nickel as I prefer the look of a nickel finish razor. So I was thinking about getting though the, uh, another one of the original models in the Bakelite wish I'd kept mine. It was really pristine condition. That one, unfortunately, I think the person is going to be pretty upset when they get it there because the eBay seller put pictures up and they had a close up and I thought, is that what I'm seeing? And because it's a black Bakelite, it's hard to tell. It was all cracked on the, the Bakelite part underneath the head. Uh, of course, in their description, they don't say anything about this. Obviously, cracked, clean through, broken free. Uh, so you might still be able to shave with it, but someone's going to be pretty upset when they see that, I think. And in their description, they don't describe that. They don't tell you, oh, it's cracked. Please take note of that. They just say, take a look at the pictures as that's part of the description. And they knew what they were doing. Unfortunately, not all sellers are honest and hoping they can skate something by you and say, well, I told you, look at the pictures, but really, if a seller knows that there's something wrong with the razor and there's no way they could not know about that, then they, they have an obligation really to state that in the description. It's people like that that make me such a pessimist. Just don't trust people anymore. <sighs> Dishonesty by omission. But anyway, that's a whole other subject. Don't know how we're doing time-wise, but really enjoying the shave and the scent of this soap. for you with regard to the razor um, they originally came out in the early 40s around 43 I believe I think this model came out around 1950 the MK2 if you have any other questions with regard to them something I didn't quite cover or you're curious about with regard just uh, ask me down below in the description or in the comments down below
It's already got that there. That trouble area already cleaned up. Let's rinse this clean. I'll take it apart and clean it later. that goatee holds water. I have to kind of lean forward, make sure I drip over the sink instead of down the front of me and onto the floor. All right. <clears throat> Man, nice shave. We're going to hit it with uh, running low on that witch hazel. I do have some Dickinson's to add to this. But I really haven't been you know, a piece of the cork shot out in that time. Let's get that out of my palm. Anyway, uh, you know, I was in the habit and I just have continued using the witch hazel uh, along with the aftershave that I'm using with the scent. And, you know, so many aftershaves now have good food products and skin food products in them as part of that cork um, it's really a, a redundancy they even have witch hazel in the aftershave so but so I've been debating you know do I want to keep I'll probably fill the thing up and use it occasionally but I don't always uh, use that anymore rooster's nest this is out of Lexington Kentucky uh, they came out with some, uh, I took the other bottle out of here. Once a year they do a batch, I guess they start a, a year or so ago. Um, I had missed batch one, and someone had told me about when I bought this, it was batch two, really enjoyed it. They just released batch three, and so uh, I picked one up for myself and a friend. I haven't opened that yet, they seem to be enjoying it. And so... I'm hoping it's at least as good as this or an improvement over it. Although I love this one just the way it is. Well, there you have it. Uh, I will say too, when these came out with the MK1, they were known as the Shake Sharp. Um, the individual uh, Jones, I don't think was connected to it until they came with the MK2. And that's when they were started to be called the GE Jones Shake Sharp. And that's what this one is, a GE Jones Shake Sharp MK2 in nickel finish. Uh, and I'll have the, everything I use, I always put down in my description below. Anyway, Dave in Kentucky, hope you're doing well out there. Hope you're enjoying your shaves. Be kind, be safe, and we'll see you on the forum. Take care.